What's up guys, welcome to Echo Productions, I'm Silas Willoughby and I've made videos similar to this before. But today I want to cover the very broad subject of making your videos look cinematic. And I'm not going to cover developing your own style, that just takes time and experience. And yes, sure, story is still king, but let's at least tell stories that look good. Anyway, here's something of what we will be making today. So yeah, huge thanks to Rory Marion for helping me shoot that sequence. If you're not already following him, I've put a link to his channel in the notes down below. Let's try and get him to 2,000 subscribers today, what do you guys think? Moving on, the first thing to learn would be basic camera settings. There are four main settings you need to know. Frame rate, ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. First up is frame rate. A video clip is just a sequence of pictures played back quickly. And the frame rate is the number of pictures taken every second, that's why it's called FPS. You generally want to shoot in 24 FPS for anything that is going to be normal speed. 24 FPS looks the most natural and feels the most cinematic to most viewers. And if you want to shoot slow motion, you will need to shoot in a higher frame rate, so you can convert that back to 24 FPS later. I generally shoot in 60 FPS for any slow motion. Next up is ISO. Now ISO is your camera's sensitivity to light. The higher your ISO, the brighter your image, but the more noise you get. ISO is completely digital, at least in a digital camera. So if you turn it up too high, your image will look gross, with too much noise, but as long as you leave it below 3200, you should be fine on most cameras. Next we have our aperture. This is how much light your lens is letting in. The lower the number, the more open your aperture is, and the more light you're letting hit your sensor. On top of dictating light levels though, it also controls how shallow your depth of field is. The higher the number, the broader your depth of field, but the lower the aperture, the shallower your depth of field. To get this nice, smooth bokeh I had in the sequence earlier, you want to leave it as low as possible. I shot that almost entirely at f1.7. And finally, we have shutter speed. Shutter speed is in technical terms the length of time your camera shutter is open, exposing the shutter to light. But all you need to know is what it does and how to use it. Basically, the higher your shutter speed, the less light you let in, and the lower your shutter speed, the more light you let in. On top of that, your shutter also affects your motion blur. At a high shutter speed, say 4000, you get a weird choppy look, and next to no motion blur. But a lower shutter speed gives you more motion blur. Generally, a realistic amount of motion blur is about twice that of your frame rate. You can also play with your shutter speed in photography to get these long shutter pictures. Here's one I took at a shutter of 0.5 to get that smooth look you see on postcards a lot, and one at 4000 to show the crisp detail of the water. Moving on, let's take a quick look at the basics of composition. The first and most important rule to learn is the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds basically puts a grid over your image, and then you frame your shots on the intersection between the vertical and horizontal lines or you can frame key aspects of your image on one of the lines. Another important thing to know when using the rule of thirds is looking space. Looking space basically frames your subject on the opposite line from where they are looking or facing, to keep it feeling more natural. Anyway, I'm not going to go in depth on all of the ways to use these rules and the various other composition rules in today's video. So let's move on. So now we come to shooting. When shooting a cinematic sequence, there are a few things you need to keep in mind. The basics being lighting, movement, and camera movement. If you want a more in-depth look at lighting, I've put a link up there for you to check out if you're interested. However, for a cinematic sequence like the one I showed you at the beginning, I didn't really do too much. All I did was try and keep my subject in the shade to give an even soft lighting over them, or I took advantage of the sun for lens flares or as a backlight. But generally, you want to avoid shots that have a super bright area and a super dark area. Those can push your camera's dynamic range beyond its actual dynamic range and it can look gross and blown out or underexposed. Next up we have movement. I really like to have my subject moving. It gives the shots more energy and keeps the pace flowing between shots. If you watch the sequence again, you will see how much everything is moving between the different shots. If the subject isn't moving, then I like to move the camera, or I'll even do both. I consequently just made a video on camera movement if you want to check that out. Again, up there. Anyway, that's the bulk of today's video. If you're interested in how I edit my cinematic sequences, I've made a lot of videos on editing already, but I hope this helped you out some. If it did, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video. Anyway, this has been Echo Productions, I'm Silas Willoughby, and I'll see you in the next one.